A fundamental use of number systems is to count items. Here you can see I've got 10 squares. And into this square here, I'm going to draw one dot. Into this one, I'm going to draw two dots. And I'm going to fill each of the squares up with a number of dots. We can see now that all of the squares have been filled up with dots and if we look at the first square here and ask ourselves how many dots are in there and we answer is obviously zero so I'll write zero against that one and down here we can see there is one dot in this square here we can see that there are two dots alongside each square you can see I've wrote what's in just simply using a word so here for example there's nine dots so I've wrote the number nine at the side now, of course, we use number systems instead of this. So here, for example, instead of writing zero, I can write a zero like this. One, two, three, four, all the way down to the last one, which is nine. Let's now consider this square. And inside here, I'm going to actually enter ten dots. And there we can see the ten dots. And of course, that means that... I can write at the side here 10. Now with the number system we're used to, we haven't got a symbol for 10. What we now do, we reuse the symbols from 0 through to 9. So to represent a 10, we use the 0 and the 1 as you can see there. And 10 is written as 1, 0. So using the symbols 0 through to 9, we can represent any number we like. So for example, if I had a box with 100 items in, well, I'd represent 100 items as shown here. A 1 followed by two zeros. 150 items, it would be a 1, a 5, and a 0. 1,001 items, well, it would be 1, 0, 0, 1. 2,000 items. I could use different symbols to represent these dots. So, for example, if I was going to represent the 5 in Roman numerals, I would write a V. If I was going to represent the 10, I would put an X. A 9 would be that. We've seen how we can represent these dots using deanery, and we also did it using the Roman numerals. Now, of course, the purpose of that was to show that there's nothing particularly special about our number system. It's much better than the Roman number system because we can more easily do mathematics using it. But inside a computer, we will know that there are two states, 0 and 1. So we have binary, which can be used to represent these dots. So if I was going to represent zero things in the box well we use a zero if i was going to represent one thing in a box then we represent one now we've got a problem we've just run out of symbols in the same way when we got to nine with the deanery number system we run out of symbols we started to reuse the symbols we've got the same issue here two in fact becomes well we have the zero and the one and that represents two in binary this represents three in binary and if we look now we've run out of symbols for the first column because the first column has a zero and a one in what we therefore do we now put two zeros and a one and we can continue down here and all of these numbers that i'm writing out are the binary representation of the number of dots in that particular box and of course it doesn't look intuitive so what we need to do is to see, well, how can we make this more intuitive? Well, the thing we need to concern ourselves with is position coefficients, often called place value coefficients, or simply place values. And to do that, we're going to look at our number system again. But the key here, we can see that the number of dots, the things we're counting, can be represented in different ways, some we're not familiar with, as you can see here with binary. It doesn't look obvious. Let's consider the following deanery number. We have 555. And here we can see we've used the figure 5 on three occasions. Now the value each of these files take up depends upon their position. Here we can see I've wrote out hundreds, tens and units. And what we can do, we can look at this 5 here and we realise that that's in the unit position so I'll put it underneath here. The next 5 is this one here. And I'm going to put that under the tens column. And the final one here, it's in a position which puts it in the hundreds columns. So what we can really see is here we have five lots of units, which I can show like that. Here I've got five lots of tens, which I can show like that. 
And finally, we have five lots of 100s. And all of these are then uh, added together. Now, five lots of 100 is obviously 500. Five lots of 10 is obviously 50. And five lots of 1 is obviously 5. And I can now add them up, and we can see that 500 plus 50 plus 5 is 555, which is where we started with our number up here. Let's write down a binary number that represents a quantity of 9. And it actually looks like this. Now, in our number system, deanery, you would say, well, that looks like 1001. Well, in fact, it is 9 in binary. And so we don't get confused with using binary and using decimal and other number systems. What I'm going to do here is just put a little 2. Now, that 2 is just a memory aid for me to make me realize that I'm dealing with binary here. So if we're going to deal with number systems, we're going to come over here now to where this is 555. And remember, we said that was a deanery number system. So we put a little 10 there to remind us that that, in fact, is deanery. It's easy to remember why it should be 10, because there's 10 figures in deanery, so it's said to have a base of 10. If we look at binary, this 2 here, well, binary has a base of 2, because it only has two figures, 1 and 0. Here you can see I've wrote out headings to columns, units, 2s, 4s, and 8s. They represent the position values of each of the figures in the binary number. So, for example, if I look at this one here, it goes in this position, in the units position. If I look at this zero, then that zero goes in the twos position. This zero goes in the fours position. And this one here goes in the eights position. And if I now take this a step further, this one here really means I've got one lot of eight and that is added to no lots of 4, which is added to no lots of 2, and finally we add 1 lot of 1. Now, 1 times 8 is obviously 8. That is added to nothing times 4 is obviously nothing. And over here we have 0 times 2, which is obviously 0. And then we add on the 1 times the 1, which is obviously 1. And when we add all of those up, we end up with the number 9. So we can see that, in fact, I was correct in saying that the original binary number 1001, in fact, has the value 9, meaning it would count 9 things or represent 9 things. Now, if I'm going to represent 555 in the deanery number system in what I call position coefficient format, it would look like this. We take each of the figures, and I'm simply going to space them out to give myself plenty of room here. And what we then do, we multiply each of the figures by 10, as you can see here. Then we start in the least significant position, and that is 10 to the 0. This is 10 to the 1, and this is 10 to the 2. And you can see we're counting up from 0 to 1 to 2 here. And then we add those up. I'm now going to look at this with respect to the binary number. And I'm going to space out the 1, the 0, the 0, and the 1. And because this has got a base of 2, I'm simply going to multiply each of these by 2, as you can see here. And all these are going to be added to each other. So we can see there's a similar pattern here to the deanery number system. Now we come to this 2, and that becomes 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and 2 to the 3. So what we can see now is that we've actually produced a look that has a very similar pattern. Whereas for the deanery, we were multiplying by powers of 10. For the binary, we were multiplying by powers of 2. Now we have to remind ourselves what these powers mean. Well, if I say I've got 10 to the 2, that actually means I've got 10 times 10, which is, as we all know, 100. Um, and that's useful because that 5 was in the hundreds column. If I look at the next one, 10 to the 1, well, that actually represents 10. If I look at 10 to the 0, that actually represents 1. 10 to the 0 is 1. If I come over here now and look at the binary, I've got 2 to the power 3. Now that means I've got 2 
times 2 times 2. And if we multiply 2 times 2 times 2, we obviously get 8. Now 2 to the power 2 is in fact 2 times 2, which in fact is equal to 4. And then if I have 2 to the 1, well 2 to the 1 is actually equal to 2. And 2 to the 0, well that is equal to 1. Anything raised to the power 0 is 1. Now if we look at this column here, we can see that it's 1, 2, 4, 8 as we look up. And those are the headings that we had here. Units, 2s, 4s, 8s.